Alan Mulally is staying on as CEO through 2014, and you know the the odds-on favorite to succeed him is Mark Fields, who's the chief operating officer. What is Mark Fields' leadership style like, and to what extent do you think he's going to be able to maintain this new and improved culture? Chris, I've known Mark for, for, for a long time before Alan's name was even mentioned here. I, I was working with covering market when he was president of Ford's Americas Group, which was the company's largest division. Mark today is really a product of Alan's cultural transformation. He's a guy who, who was the first person on the team to really get with the program. There's a story that I tell in the book that I think is, is really illustrative of how, how Alan's process works. And, it, and every week, you know, he would, he would ask the executives to, to give a five-minute update on their part of the company and color code it. All the data points would either be green if they were on plan, red if they were off plan, or yellow if there was a, a question about them. And for the first few weeks, all of these, these slideshows were green. And finally, <laughs> Alan just, just stopped one of the meetings in the middle of the meeting and said, hey, guys, we're about to lose $14 billion. Is, is there nothing going wrong at this company? How do you explain it? The next week, the next week, Chris, Mark was, was preparing his slide deck. And this was in December of 2006. They were getting ready to launch the new Ford Edge, brand new vehicle. And Mark knew that there was a problem that had been discovered at the last minute by some of the test drivers at the, at the factory. Uh, and it hadn't been diagnosed yet, some sort of rattle in the back. And it was the end of the year. This was the type of thing that would normally just be brushed under the carpet because people would be anxious to, to close the year out, get their bonuses, you know. No one would want to have to, to get called on the carpet for something like this at the end of the year. But he decided, you know what, I'm probably going to lose my job anyways. So I'm going to see if this guy's for real. And he put it in red. And uh, the next Thursday, Mark gets up and is giving his presentation. He gets to the, to the product update slide. And he says, and as you can see here, everybody, uh, we have a problem with the edge launch. It's in red. Here's what it is. The entire room just fell silent, Chris. And I talked with every executive that was in that room, and they all told me the same thing. They thought Mark Fields had just fired himself from Ford Motor Company. And then all of a sudden, they heard someone start clapping. And everyone turned around, and it was Alan. And he just kept clapping and clapping, and he said, Wow, Mark, that's great visibility. Who can help Mark with this problem? And, and of course, then everyone tripped over each other to try to you know, <laughs> offer help. <laughs> and... The funny thing, though, Chris, is that even after that, people told me that they, they fully expected when they showed up a week later that Mark was going to be gone, that, that Alan had just put on a brave face for the meeting and that he had quietly taken him out behind the woodshed and, and lopped his head off uh, in the next seven days. When Mark showed up the next week and wasn't in trouble and wasn't you know demoted or, or, or on the way out the door... Everybody said, wow, I guess he really does mean it. And the meeting after that, as Alan has described it to me, the slides were like, a, a as he puts it, a beautiful rainbow of color, <laughs> most of it red. <laughs> uh, it, it, it sounds like Boeing could benefit from uh, having some, some of those color-coded meetings on a weekly basis. Um, Alan Mulally came over from Boeing. Uh, Boeing is facing some problems right now with the Dreamliner jet, which is grounded by the FAA. And there are some out there who are placing the blame at the feet of Alan Mulally, saying, hey, look, this was his baby. Um, you know, the, the, it, really, uh, it really stops with him. Um, what do you think of that? that? It seems like he's been at Ford long enough that, uh, that it really shouldn't be uh, they shouldn't be putting the blame at his feet, but but what do you think of that? And to what extent uh, is he aware of this criticism? Well, the Dreamliner is absolutely Alan's baby, but the reason why it's in trouble, I would submit to you, Chris, is because Boeing has stopped following the very sort of management system that that, that we've just been talking about. This whole color coded management system and all of the other aspects of Mulally's kind of as he puts it, working together strategy, are things that he developed when he was president of Boeing's commercial aviation group, when he was working on projects like the, the Dreamliner. 
the problem is not is not Allen or the process. The problem is is that in the years since he's left Boeing, from what I've heard talking to Boeing employees, is they have they have gradually moved away from this. They've gradually abandoned his system to the point that they don't even have these weekly meetings anymore, and that has allowed the kind of you know. Uh, bad practices that that plagued Boeing, you know, 20 years ago before he took over, to to creep back into the system, and and I think it's a cautionary tale for Ford. You know, a, a Ford executive asked me a, a couple months ago, what's what's the most important thing that we need to keep in mind, and I told them, you guys need to look at what's happening at Boeing. You need to watch it closely because there is the cautionary tale for you about what happens when Alan leaves. I don't think it's Alan's fault at all. I think it's Boeing's fault for abandoning Alan Mulally's management system.